Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna get started with MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's get started. Now to begin, I do want to mention that you can actually pick up your Raspberry Pi Pico from your local micro center. And as of right now, they actually have a promotion going on where these guys are actually half the price of MSRP. So you could actually pick them up for $1.99 versus $4. I'll leave a link to everything I talk about down in the description below. Now to begin, I am actually coding everything on my regular desktop over here, which is still a Linux based desktop. So everything we do can actually be carried over to the Raspberry Pi or even on a regular Windows computer. Now I do have a couple of camera angles going on right now, just way you could see the Raspberry Pi. You could also see my desktop and everything that's going on. Now that everything is established to begin, the first thing you want to do is boot up the Raspberry Pi and holding down the button called the boot select. Once you do this, it will actually mount as a USB storage device, and then you could actually transfer your codes over. Now on there, when you first load it, it will actually have an index.html. Open that, and it'll actually bring you to the website, which is pico.raspberrypi.org. Uh, what we're gonna do is head over to get started with MicroPython and download this UTF2 file. This will actually convert your Raspberry Pi Pico into uh, MicroPython. So once everything is downloaded, um, I could actually just head over to where I downloaded this. And first thing I wanna do is because I can't write to the drive and it's you see how it's, there's a lock emblem, I would actually have to enter my terminal and sudo copy that over. So sudo cp pico uf2 over to media done and then pico pi2. Once you do that, you see how the file just transferred over? It will actually reboot the Pi. You see how it just unmounted itself? And that is it. The Raspberry Pi Pico is set up for MicroPython. We do have to download an application so we could actually code to it, and that's called Tani. So you could actually just Google Tani. And for Windows user, you could just download it directly from their website. But for Linux, you could actually open up a terminal and download it from app. So sudo app install Tani. Now I already went ahead and did this so you don't have to wait for it. But next step we do have to do is give ourselves permission so that we can actually use the USB device. So we're gonna do sudo user mod dash A capital G dial out to our username Don. Now at this point you wanna log off and log back in. This way this takes effect. Once you're done with that, uh, we could actually operate our Tani now and interface with our Raspberry Pi Pico. So I'm gonna go Tani and this will boot up. And you can notice that this says actually user bin Python. We would have to head over to run, select interpreter. Over here, we would choose MicroPython generic. Now, if you're doing this on the Raspberry Pi, it will actually say MicroPython Pico instead of generic. But for in our case, it's gonna be generic and you only have a handful of boards. So we're gonna use ACM0 right here, hit okay. And there we have it. We're connected to a Raspberry Pi Pico and we could basically type whatever we want right here as an interpreter. So let me uh, minimize everything right now. First thing we're gonna do is try some little thing. So let's do print hello world, and it should just print hello world. Now, if you want to know what modules are installed in this, this is MicroPython, so you could always Google MicroPython and figure that out, but you could also do help modules and it'll actually print out a list of modules that you can use. Mainly what we're gonna be using is machine. And uh, keep note that UOS is very important as well because this allows you to actually look through the file system. But yeah, let's try something else, more of a coding base. So let's do uh, import machine. Actually, you know what? From machine import pin and import time next we're going to do is set up our pin now the gpio pin for the led on board is 25 so we're just going to do uh, led equals pin 25 pin dot out then we're going to do while true we are going to light up the led so we're going to do LED dot toggle and we're also going to do time dot sleep and we're going to 
make it every half a second. We're going to now save, Control S to save. And there's a selection between this computer or MicroPython device. Now you want to save it to your MicroPython device. And the name you want to name it is main.py. The reason why is because this will always boot up first. So if you name this something else other than main.py, it will not load the code and you would have to manually load it yourself. But if you have it set as main.py, it will always load that code first. So hit OK. And then now we can hit play. And if there's no errors, as you can see, it's blinking half a second on our 25 pin LED. Now we want to get a little interesting with this. What we can do is actually print out to the console. So uh, let's set up something where we do a little bit of math. So I'm going to do x equals zero. Okay, that's going to be our first variable. And here we're going to do print. Uh, let's do the times tables or something. It's a little bit easier. So three times uh, variable equals variable close that off dot format open quote it will be x and then comma and then it'll be three times x okay so what i did here was three which is a normal text that you're going to see times the variable which we are going to call from x right here and then it will equal another variable, that's why we have this comma here, which is the actual math problem, three times x. And then now we're gonna increment the, the x, so x plus equals one. So every time it will actually increment this by one. So we're gonna save this again. We're gonna stop and connect. Uh, we're gonna save this again. And now we're gonna hit run. And there we have it. Now it's printing to the console three times one, you know, and every time it increments by one. So now not only it's printing into the console, it's also blinking the LED. And that's basically it for operating with MicroPython on a Raspberry Pi Pico. Now, a couple of other things that you want to make sense of is that it does have a file system on there. So there's two file system, one, which is the mass storage device. And I believe it's 128 megabytes, while the flash onboard flash is two megabytes. And when we save something to the script, this is actually the two megabyte partition that we're saving everything onto. So let me see if I could say storage space, total 1.8, free 1.8. So it's actually using some other space for something else. And properties, nope, there's nothing. But that actually gives you an idea of how much storage space you have. Now to actually copy files over to it, we will actually have to install something called R shell. So we're gonna do that real quick. Let me open up terminal over here. And we're going to do sudo pip3 install r shell. And I do have pip3 installed, r shell just installed. Now in r shell, we would do r shell slash dev slash tty acm0. Oh, sorry, it's dash p. What I had to do was because my Tawny was actually connected to it, I just had to reset it. So now that I am connected to using our shell, you could see the actual name is different and it says home.don. Now what I can do is the board name is actually called PY board because that's a default string that it has. You could actually always change this if you need to, but I'm just gonna leave it as PY board, which means if I was to ls slash PY board, that's the directory of the Raspberry Pi. And you can see my main PY is there. So if I was to do cat PY board main, that is the same code that I just had. You see how it's print times three and the LED toggle LED. Now from here, depending on the directory that you're on, you can actually transfer files over to the Raspberry Pi Pico. So what I'm gonna do is basically exit this real quick. I'm gonna touch test.py. And you know what, you know, I'm going to change that test touch board.py touch means it will create that file. And in board.py, board I'm going to nano board.py and call this name equals Pico. And I'm going to save this control X. Yes. And save the board.py. So now if I go back up and run my command to go into the R shell and I could cp board.py over to pi board. You see how that transferred over? Now I could exit this and if I re-enter it, 
Now the board name is Pico because that's what I just did. I just changed a setting to the board Pico. Now because I changed the board to a Pico, Pi is not there. That Pi um, board is not there. You would actually now call out the directory of Pico itself. Now R shell does help, especially if you're getting a lot of other modules or libraries installed, especially if you're trying to get the LCD drivers or something that is not particularly in the Raspberry Pi MicroPython code itself that you need. You could actually always transfer the library over through here. That is it for me for the MicroPython bit. But if you guys are interested, also take a look at CircuitPython because they actually just released their own version of the MicroPython code or CircuitPython code for the Raspberry Pi Pico, which also includes a lot more libraries like HID or you know mouse or keyboard and stuff like that. So I would definitely check that out and I'll leave a link down in the description below for that. And if you guys have any questions about this, leave it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.